Welcome to the HR Empowerment Podcast, where we will uncover strategies and new insights from HR professionals who discuss up-to-date regulations, best practices, and the most pressing topics like diversity and equity, leadership, dealing with difficult situations, and much more that affect your bottom line and business. Thanks for joining us. Hey, everybody, Wendy Sellers here, the HR lady. Welcome back. This is episode four of five in the series of building burnout proof company cultures. We're here with our expert, David Shar. Hey, David. Hello. Hey, we want to educate our listeners today on how companies can measure the impact of burnout, um, real burnout. Is it real? Is it not? Is it affecting our revenue? I mean, when we talk money, that's usually when the C-suite listens. So what advice can you give to our C-suite and our HR folks that are listening about measuring the impact of their employee burnout on their company? Yeah, so if you... If you feel like you have a burnout problem, bringing somebody in to um, uh, use an inventory like the Maslach bat burnout inventory, you can see if it's actually burnout. But I think I think um, mostly what we're concerned about are the symptoms of burnout, right? Um, and those indicators that, that something's not right here and it, it's very likely burnout. Uh, one of those things is turnover. Um, turnover and turnover intention and we do a really good job um you know within hr and io psychology we do a really good job about talking about the costs of turnover but we don't often or as often talk about the costs of turnover intention right especially because turnover intention does not always result in turnover But when people are looking to leave, they want to leave the organization, but don't, that can cause a lot more issues than people leaving the organization. Yeah, I call it quit and stay. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. And so many people, we've now coined it quiet quitting. How is quiet quitting different from what what we've recognized in the burnout literature for for decades and decades? Um, There was a term, um, uh, oh no, it's not coming to me now. But there, there was a there was a term for quiet quitting. It'll come to me later. Um, but but the, this this idea that um, when somebody is burned out, they've got a couple different options, and one of the options is to get away, and the other option is to get away emotionally and mentally. Right? Oh, Why not yeah. just? unplug and do the bare minimum especially when there's this equity issue where there's this question i'm putting in all this effort and what am i seeing out of it it's not fair hr professionals we don't we don't hire people managers don't hire people uh because they think i i hope that this individual sticks exactly to the letter of of the contract right i want them (laughs) to read this handbook and do everything exactly as it you always expect for your people to go above and beyond. Right. But they'll do that, but then but then they'll look one day, they'll look back and say, whoa, whoa, I'm doing all of this and you're sticking to your contract. You're, you're not doing anything extra. You're not going the extra mile as my manager, as my organization, I am. And what am I getting for it? Um, same thing, same thing like as yesterday, right? Advantage. What's yeah, that? You're not- You're getting the same thing as yesterday or the same thing as a week before, two months before. You're getting nothing more, nothing less. So, you know, what what would you suggest if people are if somebody came to you right now, um, one of our clients, one of our shared clients came to you and said, you know, we have a lot of employees that are saying they're burnt out. How do you identify that they really are burnt out and it's because of work? Is it surveys? Is it assessments? Is it, is it, um, you know, I don't even know data. I know data, 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 but where do you get this data from? Yeah. So a burnout assessment is really helpful. Um, the MBI, the Maslach, Maslach burnout inventory is really helpful. Um, because like we've said in the past, Burnout is sort of like this term that we use for a lot of different things. And so um, that's that's really, uh, if you want to really figure out, is this professional burnout, that will get you the clearest answer. 
Um, but conversation should be happening with your employees all of the time, because not only is that another way to assess, but hopefully that's a way where you see the smoke before the flames, where you can actively, the the um, act of reaching out, ironically, so so in a lot of ways, the act of reaching out, even via survey, that's giving people a sense of control it's right. making them feel like they matter, that you care. So so just reaching out in any way could actually be part of the solution, um, not just figuring out what the problem is, unless you then don't do anything about it. I was just going to say that. I was just going to say, hold, please, hold, please, listeners. <laughs> Please do not do a survey if you don't plan on having any action after that, because your employees will never complete a survey for you ever again. <laughs> right. Never, ever, ever. You will you will leave things more broken than when you started if you don't answer the survey. Absolutely. We do have to be careful, though, from a ethical standpoint regarding the uh, Maslach burnout inventory, though, correct? I mean... For anyone who's not familiar, it's a 22-part questionnaire, measures depersonalization, emotional exhaustion, personal success, many other factors, which give David a call. He's the guy that you can <laughs> consult with to go knee-deep on all that stuff. But it, it contains a lot of data and information that is personally identifiable, and, and it, part of that, David, correct me if I'm wrong, is that we can, quote, diagnose someone on the verge of becoming burnt out. And if a managerial core isn't isn't properly trained on how to work with and deal with these numbers, uh, we could be on the cusp of something that may be unethical in using that data the wrong way. Am I wrong? Yeah, so that's a great point. So anytime you're using um, any kind of survey, uh, anything, a lot of times people DIY these things and right. get themselves in trouble. Um, there are experts that are out there. I know an organization um, just I just came across an organization that uh, added this harmless thing to their handbook. They they had all these people complaining about how much they were paid. So they went into the handbook that they had an HR professional originally. Right. And they wrote that it's a you know, that you may be terminated if we find out that you're talking about your salary with other employees. So as most people who are listening to this know, you don't want that in your handbook. You that policy is not all right. right. You know, so so anytime anytime that you're dealing with something as serious as burnout, you're gonna want to bring in an expert. Yes. Um, you're gonna want to work with somebody who knows how to use the tools that are available in the right way and train those um, managers but, the right way to use it too, right? Yes. So the managers, the managers themselves might not be, it may not even make sense to make them privy to the results, the individual results. Um, you know, that might stay with the external consultant or within the HR department if it's done internally. Um, but because the bigger thing is that burnout is contagious, right? And so, and so as you see burnout spreading and it, it's for multiple factors, why it's contagious, um, the, if you want a clear answer of what's happening in your organization, that, that might be a good place to start. Awesome. Thank you so much for that. Thanks for listening, everybody, to episode four of our five-part series on building burnout proof company cultures. I couldn't even get that through. I might need I need might need a map a nap here myself. <laughs> <laughs> In our final episode, we're going to talk a little bit more about the future of burnout prevention. And I'm excited to hear about this too, because as we already said, David, you know, everybody, not everybody, but many people since the pandemic are more burned out than ever and they don't really know where to go so our managers need help hr needs help we need help thanks for joining us everybody we'll be back shortly to get you that help thank you for joining the hr empowerment podcast brought to you by aurora training advantage we hope you've gained new insight and strategies to navigate the hr profession we look forward to you joining us again on the hr empowerment podcast